And once it's all done, we know exactly uh, how this works. But as far as a workflow, as far as a process, this is a very simple way to do it. And in just a few minutes, you can really improve your processes by going through this exercise. Hey everybody, I'm Micah with Workday Ninja. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how do you take an existing workflow, whether it's documented or not, and visualize it in a tool like Lucidchart. So let's jump in. I'm gonna cover how to visualize workflows. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked when working with clients, especially new clients or younger companies that are starting out and just starting to grow their team. How do I take what I'm doing and actually visualize this so that we can put it into a project management tool, build a system around it or anything like that. So I am using Lucidchart. Uh, Miro is also another really good option. Essentially, you want anything that can draw boxes and arrows and allow you to move it around like that and stay connected and make things align really easy. Okay, so let's just do a sample new client onboarding process. Um, so first thing would just be getting the main blocks out that we want to do. So mark the deal as one, create a new client folder in ClickUp, add a client log list to the folder. Do that, maybe we create a new toggle project for the client, the new client in Slack Google, create a client brief, create a Google Drive folder, and then we would save the client brief into the folder. Awesome. All right, and so that's kind of our basic client onboarding. Uh, we've got the project management stuff set up. We've got some toggle stuff set up, some time tracking. Uh, but it's still, it's kind of linear and it's a little bit messy. It's a little bit hard to follow. Let's actually, instead of this, I'm gonna get some swim lanes in here. Some room to work. Okay, so these top swim lanes, these are gonna represent the platforms that we're working in. So let's make our CRM pipe drive. And I'm actually gonna disconnect this for now because what we're looking at right now is that we're gonna mark the deal as one. We're gonna do that in pipe drive. Super easy. Okay, the next platform is ClickUp. So now we're gonna get our next one in line. So the first thing that we're gonna do is mark the deal as one, and then we're gonna create a new client folder in ClickUp. We can actually, because we added the swim lane, we can actually keep this much more simple. And now you can start to see this is already a little bit easier to understand what's going on. All right, so let's get rid of that. And we're gonna add a client backlog list to the folder that we just created. So this is a linear progress or a linear uh, step in this process. All right, now one thing that I'm going to assume in this video is that we have some sort of list inside of ClickUp that represents our clients at the higher level and we'll call it the client hub. Perfect. Now building out the client hub, that'll be a topic for another video. Uh, but again, just picture this as a place to store all your client data, a nice list of all your clients. You can see which ones are active or not. Super easy to build out in ClickUp, but also super, super useful. Okay, so now we've got another platform here called Toggle. This is going to be our time tracking. So then we're going to create the new project here in Toggle. But as I look at this, I miss this step. And this is, again, one of the reasons that it helps to go through this exercise. Before we can create a Toggle project, we need to create a new client in Toggle. All right, and then we can create a new project. And that would come after this or uh, really doesn't matter. Because um, one thing that we can see here is that it doesn't necessarily need to happen at the same time. Let me move all these down, give us a little room. And we can see that as soon as the deal is marked as one, we could be doing these things simultaneously. And now we're in really good shape. So the deal is marked as one and create a new folder and all of these, and then create a new toggle client and all of these theoretically could happen at the same time. We're gonna give ourselves another lane here because now we are in Slack. Okay, and just like the others, 
we don't have to wait for anything to announce it in Slack. We can immediately go in and announce this new client. So we don't have to say in Slack anymore, so we can keep this nice and simple. All right, and we'll get one more lane. And this is going to be Google Drive and Google Docs. Create a Google Drive folder. We're gonna go ahead and create that simultaneously too. Once we have a Google Drive folder, then let's go ahead and create a client brief. Okay, and then we're going to save the client brief into that folder. And can we simplify this? Let's say we're gonna create a Google Drive folder, create a client brief using the template, and then we're gonna save the client brief into the Google Drive folder. That all makes sense. Okay, so I'm not gonna go much further than that on this process. We could obviously get a lot more complicated, but we essentially have something happening in Pipedrive that is then going to trigger or uh, give us the opportunity to start working through all these other different platforms to execute some client onboarding steps. Now, a lot of times when I work with clients, they're doing all of this manually. So they're marking the deal as one, and then somebody is responsible for going in and creating everything in ClickUp, everything in Toggle, everything in Slack, everything in Google Drive and Docs. But one of the ways that we could look at this is if I zoom out a little bit, a lot of this could be automated. And, and just at first glance, even without adding anything else, we have a really nice process here. You can look at this, you know what tools you're gonna work in. Um, we got it in the right order. We have things happening simultaneously. There was a lot of decisions that were made along just the journey to get to this visual, but this is a lot easier to look at than a very complicated or long text list that nobody wants to read. Again, you can just visually follow this and we could even spice this up by adding logos for each of these platforms. Um, and there's quite a bit more that we could do to this, but let's take one step further and jump in and think about this from another angle. So I'm gonna move a swim lane out here and let's look at what might be a trigger, what might be automated, and then what might be manual. And again, we could add a few more angles to this. And when I move this over here, we have a little bit more magic that's about to happen. So now I'm gonna start color coding these and make sure I color code the right thing. So let's do the trigger as light green. We'll do the automation as this purple. So let's do manual as orange because we don't want a lot of manual. The deal is marked as one. I'm gonna go ahead and color code this with the row that it's in. So now we know the pipe drive task is the trigger. So when the deal is marked as one, that's gonna trigger everything else uh, to execute from here. So the next thing we look at is create these things in pipe drive and we can create a new folder. We can add a client backlog list. We don't have to do this manually. This can all be done with automation. So the first thing that we can do is uh, we'll give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. There we go. We'll drag this down as well and we'll color code all of this. Okay, so now essentially what we're saying is as soon as this deal is marked as one, we're gonna run an automation sequence. This could be with like make.com or Zapier we're gonna create a new folder, then we're gonna create a new client backlog list, and then we're going to add the client to the client hub inside of ClickUp. Super easy. Okay, the next thing, we can actually come in here. We can also do all of this via Toggle's API. So let me get this line to match up here. I'll color code these. And again, just going through this exercise, is so important because we really want to look at now i know we can do all of this stuff in an automated fashion using zapier and make i've done it a hundred times i've helped a number of clients with this but even if you don't know it's really easy to go and look at zapier and say can i create a new folder or make or just the api and essentially uh, we can go from a fully manual process to 
something that looks like this because now that we're looking at this, color code it, fix the line. One of the reasons that I'm kind of a stickler, I'm keeping it really clean, is that it, it helps your users and your team. When it's messy, it's hard to understand what's going on. When lines are going all over the place, it causes more thinking. And in fact, I might even take this and uh, let's see if we can light up these lines a little bit. Oh, there we go, and same thing with this one. We can immediately see it's a little bit easier to look at with all the guides, without all the guides behind it. Okay, so we're really starting to get a lot of information in here without a ton of information that we have to like, process. It's just here. We know the triggers, we know it's automated, we know it's manual, and in fact, we took a linear client onboarding process and we turned it into a fully automated process. Now we would still have to build out the make scenarios or the zaps that would do this. The next question might be, what is manual? What would be a good manual step? And um, it would look something like this. So we might have a uh, Gmail approach here. We can extend this one out and then we might want a manual step here that would be email new client. Maybe we don't want to automate that. We could. We could have it send out a standard welcome message, but maybe we don't. And maybe we want to have that nice kind of personal touch. So uh, we could have something like this. As soon as the deal is marked as one, email the new client. But even looking at this, how is the person responsible for emailing the new client going to know that it's time to email the new client? And how do they know who the client is and the email address and all that kind of stuff? Let's fix that. The first thing that we'd want to do is give ourselves a little bit more space and see how when I move this swim lane, it moves this lower one too. That's so nice. It makes it so easy to design these things. All right, let's give us a little space here. And the final thing that we're going to do is create a task to email the new client. Now, this can come over this direction and we don't actually need it from here because essentially what we're saying is once all of these steps are completed, we're gonna have this task assigned to the person responsible for emailing the new client to actually email the new client manually. And just looking at this, we can see exactly how it works out. We know what we're emailing it in. If we needed to change where we were emailing them from, for example, there are email features inside of ClickUp, we could do something like this. And now the diagram is telling us that in ClickUp, we're gonna email the new client instead of using Gmail. So that's a possibility as well. The other thing to look at as well, this isn't a linear process. We don't need to add the client to the client hub in order to create the task, but we do need the backlog. So what this could look like would be something like this, where these two happen simultaneously. And it's really easy to follow. We mark the deal as one, we go to ClickUp, we create the new folder, we add the backlog list. We're adding it to the client hub and simultaneously we're creating a task. We're doing all that automatically so that nobody needs to do any manual work. The only manual work in the whole client onboarding process is um, actually emailing the new client right here. And then from that point, everything follows out. And once it's all done, we know exactly uh, how this works. In fact, we don't even need this Gmail anymore because we've decided to send the email through ClickUp which is connected to the Gmail account. But as far as a workflow, as far as a process, this is a very simple way to do it. And in just a few minutes, you can really improve your processes by going through this exercise. All right, so there's a lot more that we could expand on with this. We could add a racy chart. We could add a video demonstration. I would highly recommend all of those. I'm gonna save those for another video, but for right now, Try going through your workflows, try visualizing it with a tool like Lucid or Miro. Uh, there'll be a lot of decisions that you'll need to make to get it into that visual, and that's where the magic happens. Until next time. So thanks so much for joining me on how to create a simple visual uh, representation of a workflow. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And
and stay tuned for more videos like this one.